All I can think about is Miami Vice when yes. we play that one. <laughs> that was awesome. Appreciate that. Joining us now in the studio, Representative Vince Mangold. He represents District 53. Thanks for coming in today, Representative Mangold. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. Yes, sir. So you guys have been busy down there at the Capitol with uh, all sorts of stuff. It, it seems like it's been a rapid-fire sort of session. I, honestly, i got to tell you this. We, so we've passed this medical marijuana bill. Yes, sir. That Who saw that coming? Really. And that sucked all the air out of the room, yep. it seemed like, the last year. And uh, I'll have to say, Rhino, I don't know if we've talked about it in three weeks or so, very little since it passed. Yeah, it's I mean, a done deal. It, it's a done deal. It's kind of fallen off the radar, move on. And so, uh, nonetheless, you guys are still busy with uh, numerous other uh, issues that um, you're working on now. So, what sort of deadlines did we have this past week that you can uh, think of? I don't know if we had anything this week. Um, I know we've got one coming next week that we've got to get all the Senate bills that came down to our end of the hall. We've got to get them out of committee so the, all the committees are meeting, you know, seeing what's going to live, seeing what's going to die, and then we'll work through that process on the floor. But I think it's all got to be done I think the speaker said maybe by the first or okay. or something. Or I'm I'm not sure on the date, but you know that's approaching. We're in all the committee meetings right now. Okay, so before we got on the air, uh, just talking about some of the the major uh, incidents uh, that occurred this week, uh, legislatively speaking, of course, was uh, Representative Curry's right. amendment to essentially uh, change our our third party uh, manager of Medicaid. Right, and and me and Becky are both in Lincoln County, so, yeah. um, you know, we talk. And, you know, I don't think she was put up for it um, to drop that amendment. I think it was on her because she's in the medical field. Uh, as a nurse, she sees what goes on, and so she had an insight. And so, you know, the opportunity presented itself, and and so she, you know, stepped in with an amendment and, you know, going to try to change things up and see if we can't make it better. Well, we, we've had her on the program as well. This is something about which she is uh, very passionate. Very passionate. Uh, as you can tell as well. Uh, I could tell when she was here. I'm sure she uh, that comes across in the, mm -hmm. in the chamber as well. But uh, I, I think the big thing is these guys, it wasn't just in Mississippi where no, we sir. had some issues, but Ohio, I think, was really big the issues. big one. Yes, sir. And and so it, I think it doesn't make sense to continue the contract with this company to you know, manage I, I, the state. I don't know Medicaid how program. all of that works. You know what we'll have to do. You know if if we don't have them, uh, I'm sure somebody else will step up. But yeah, you know I get a lot of the points that she made. You know having somebody in state. Um, you know is there somebody ready in state to take on that responsibility? I'm not sure, but um, I guess we'll just go through the process and see how it turns out. Yeah. Well, and, uh, you know, we, we talk about it a lot on the program, but I, I think it's fair to say, uh, Representative Mangold, that the average Mississippian doesn't realize just how big an expenditure is Medicaid, even from the state's perspective. Oh, it is huge. Num I number mean, two in yes. terms of line item behind uh, education. Behind education. When you when you look at that budget, there's a or if you put it in a pie, yep. there's a huge piece of pie for education, almost as big for Medicaid, and then everything else just kind of... You yeah. know, small slices yeah. around. Yeah, and that's just the state's portion. That doesn't take exactly. into consideration the federal portion. And when you add those two together, it's almost as big as the entire state general fund. Budget. It is. It's massive. <laughs> uh, our goal, of course, should be to wean people off Medicaid and get exactly. them, in, and get them exactly. uh, to a point I, where they don't need it. Yes. I, I mean, I, you know, whatever we can do, and, and I realize some people have to have it. Right. You know, because they just financially... Um, you know, they're disabled or, or right. the elderly. But you got a lot of folks that, that are getting it that really could be working somewhere. Yeah. And, and, you know, and I know insurance is expensive. I mean, it costs me a, a bundle for, uh, you know, my family. But mm -hmm. it's something out there that they can handle. Yeah. Uh, and Mississippi, of course, uh, unfortunately ranks at the top of the states in terms of its federal match, which is based on, uh, our our economic situation and our our household and per capita income in general some seven hundred thousand Mississippians yes sir on and that's without expansion that's just right. children that's, they're and there now. The various coverage groups yeah so anyhow 
All right. Um, what do you think is going to happen with respect to what I, I have sort of described as the issue that is rising to the level of medical marijuana? And that's tax reform yes. uh, in the state. We've got um, uh, a measure, of course, in the House which has passed. I don't know that a bill has been officially filed in the Senate yet. I think we just have a proposal at this point. To my knowledge, I mean, they've got a framework and and a so-called bill. Yeah. I don't think they've discussed it. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it has hit the floor. I don't think it's hit the committee. Uh, I think they're just, you know, talking about it. But, you know, we've rolled a product out, uh, changed it from last year to make it better. Yeah. Uh, Because, you know, last year they had the, you know, the farmers were paying more, the loggers, the manufacturers. And, you know, it was going to affect me as a farmer, Uh, you know, and, you know, the speaker asked me what I thought about it. And I said, well, sir, I'm on, you know, I'm going to support it. I think it's going to help Mississippi, but it leaves a bad taste in my mouth because it's going to cost me more money to run a farm. Yeah. And that was, you know, across the state. But we fixed that, took that out. And so now we've this bill is a lot better product than what we had last year. That's definitely it has has been improved substantially. And hats off to the speaker because he said on this program, and I've seen him say it publicly. Look, if there are squawks, if there are issues, let's hear them. Let's yes. address them. Let's dig in. I I, I think you would agree. That's, I, that's I do. the way he, he has told it. that end of the building. Um, if there's something in there that gives you heartburn. Let's talk about it. Yeah. You know, we, we don't have to do it, but let's do something. Yeah. You know, and, and you know, the one that, that he has proposed that we've got on, on their side waiting for them to take up is, is pretty solid. Yeah. You know, it's got lots of triggers in it that protects the state, protects the, you know, the local economy. And, you know, I think it's a good deal. Yeah. And I, I would agree. It, it seems like that all of uh, the objections – that I can recall have been addressed. They've and, addressed them all. Yeah. Every time they come with an issue, you know, they say, well, we've got a problem with this. You know, we think it's going to do this. Yeah. Well, they've come out with their numbers and say, look, this is what it does. Yeah. I mean, it, it fixes what you're saying. So, yeah. And one know. of the key ones, as you indicated, uh, as a farmer, was uh, the, the, the adjustment so that the sales tax charge Correct. the farmers on the major uh, items that they buy to operate a farm right. stays the same as it is stays now. Stays the same it right, as it is right now. Uh, the same is true for uh, retail sales of automobiles. Mm-hmm. That vehicles, didn't, that nope, didn't change didn't as well. That stays the same. In the prior version, that would have gone up. It, and, it would have. And that, that drew lots of uh, concern. Yes, and, and I, I mean, I got the concerns. Sure. I mean, I heard from folks. I'm, I'm on the board there at the Farm Bureau in Lincoln County. Okay. I had two or three call me. They said, man, what are y'all doing? We yeah. can't afford to do this. Yeah. I was like, well, I mean, you know, we're just trying to work through the process. And so, you know, I was very quick to call them when we got it taken out. I yeah. said, hey, we're good, you yeah. know. Yeah. And that's the way the process should it work. It should work. This is the way it should work. Yep. You, you put something out there and you say, look, we're not married to this. Tell us what you think. Exactly right. Folks told us what they think. They came back and said, well, here's an updated, improved version, updated, if you will. <laughs> improved version number two. Let's go with it. Well, uh, I, and I, I want to say uh, that the deadline for the bill having been transmitted to the Senate for them to to take it up, at least in committee, may be coming at the end of next week. I think so. It's it's coming up. You I know, think so end they, of the month. They've got to they've got to make a move on it, and you know. But I mean, the speaker continually tells them. Let me know what your issue is, and let's talk about it. Yeah. You know. I mean, he said. You know. Like you said, they're not married to it. I mean, right. they can take something out, adjust something, you know. But all in all, we want to send a good product to them, and we want the the state of Mississippi to benefit from it. Yeah. And and I think the one we're rolling out helps a lot of people, and it, it keeps money in their pocket. And and I mean, if you're like me or or, or everybody else in Mississippi, you get money in your pocket. It's not going to stay there long. Yeah, yeah. You know? I, I think. Uh, honestly, what is maybe being omitted from the conversation is that in in reducing income taxes, that means the taxpayers have more disposable income, correct? More to spend. Their their paycheck rises, if you will, in terms of net pay. Most of that money is going to be spent at the store on goods and services. Subject, yep. honestly, to a higher rate of tax. So, yes, sir. But in exchange for that, you get the value of what you're buying, and you have discretion over what you spend your you're money exactly on. You're exactly right. And right now, 
with the way that things are going, everybody needs a little extra no money in their pocket just to survive. No question about it. Can you hang around? Yes, no, sir. Same? We got Representative Vince Mangold in the studio. Stay- yes, indeed. <laughs> I agree. That would be Rush. Neil Pert back there on the drums, huh? Best ever, according to many. Yes, sir. I've heard you say that. I, I, I agree. Well, uh, back with uh, Representative Vince Mangold. So we're just talking about all the stuff going on uh, down there at the Capitol. And in particular, our eyes are on this uh, this tax reform yes, uh, sir. bill. And uh, we were just discussing that. So uh, a little correction I need to make. Uh, misspoke about the deadline for bills being on the floor. Uh, bills that must be on the floor in the chamber in which they originate by February 23rd. So just a few days off from now. Correct. Um, that uh, would be, what, next Wednesday, yes, sir. I believe. So bills that are transmitted and received from the other chamber must be on the floor, no, no committee deadline, but on the floor by March 15th. So yes, the sir. Senate has until March 15th. To take up this bill, this sent, uh, excuse me, this uh, House bill to reform taxes, the Tax Freedom Act, I believe, yes, is, is it is named and labeled. So, and then we'll see if the Senate uh, uh, comes up. With I mean, something. they they supposedly have one. Yeah, but, you know, not a bill that I'm aware of. No, yet, I, I mean, I've heard talk. You know, and and you know what senators I've talked to, you know, said that you know they hadn't seen it in committee, hadn't seen it. You know, hadn't heard a lot about it. Yeah, and we should also add that once it's it's there, you get two days to deal with the motions. Yes, sir. On that, so I know you're familiar with that uh, process as well. So, uh, anyhow, we're going to have our eye on that. Should, yes, sir. Should be very interesting. We got to feel pretty good, uh, though, Representative Mangold, about uh, collections and revenues, which yes, sir. The, the governor certainly uh, taken to uh, the waves, uh, the media to to tout that. It, yes, sir. It, it is, has. It has. We have done well as a state, yeah. you know, through the pandemic and everything else. We have survived and and survived well. Yeah, I think we're going to do even better. Oh, I think so. Uh, I'm sure you got wind of the big announcement from Nissan. Yes, yesterday. sir. Heard that, and uh, that was exciting. Uh, and honestly, I think that may lead to more and further economic expansion with adjunct industries. And, and you know, we get this tax bill done, that just makes it, uh, you know, a nicer uh, look for the state agree. for more businesses to, to come in. I, I agree. And it, it's beyond, uh, of course, it's important uh, to get more money into people's pockets. No yes, question sir. about that. That is top priority. But... We have to be cognizant of our need to grow and expand our economy, and we need all the tools that we can muster yes, sir. to do so. And I think this is important, an important, important. one in the, in the toolbox. And what I'd like to see, honestly, Representative Mangold, if if uh, would like to see you perhaps send this message back to your colleagues. I know many of them are listening. We've got to have, if we get this done, and I'm optimistic we will in terms of this uh, rather transformational tax reform. We've got to promote this. Yes, sir. We, we've got to sell this. Well, now, and the it, speaker just, has has done a great job. Well, I mean, of, outside of our state. Yes, yeah. outside of our state. Yeah. We've got to let it be known. But, um, you know, he's covered all the bases in the state. Okay. And I think as it as it passes, I mean, like I'm you, I'm, I'm hope and optimistic that it passes. Yeah. I think that message gets out. I hope so. I, th- I think, it I think it's out. important. I think it's important, and with the, I think with the the advent of hybrid work, why not come yes, to sir. Mississippi, come take to up Mississippi. your home here, and uh, maybe plug in and connect to your headquarters in another and, state. And they all, you know, you know, talk that you know, our cost of living is yeah not expensive, right? You know, so it'd be a great place to relocate, raise a family. Absolutely. You know, so, small town USA right here in Mississippi. I totally agree. So you and I were talking offline about um, Hillary, just thinking oh, about the, sort of the national landscape. She spoke to the uh, New York Democrat convention yesterday, and it was more woe is me. Woe is me. <laughs> oh, know, my God. Trump gosh. is the devil. Yeah. You know, the Fox, Fox News, News is, the, is his <laughs> <Facebook>. agent. Yes. <laughs> it's just incredible. But. I, I got to tell you, I, I, I caught an interesting uh, report, an interesting article in the Associated Press uh, talking about the extinction is what they, they de- how they described it, of the Democrat Party in rural America. And even a pundit I caught on MSNBC yesterday, a Democrat pundit mm-hmm. was saying, 
hey, if we don't change here, we're going to lose any any support we have in rural America, and we're going to become a party. It kind of feels like it's almost there for the elites in the coastal states. Exactly. And, you know, I'm from rural Mississippi down in Lincoln County. You talk to those folks, and, and they've voted Democrat all their life. You know, even some of the, you know, my black colleagues. Yeah. They said, we can't go along with their their thinking, right. you know, and, and we had one there in the House that uh, I think we were talking about abortion or, or something that made a lot of sense protecting the family. Well, it went down party lines. You know, the Republicans were all for it, but then you look up and there's three or four Democrats that went with it. Yeah. And, you know, we were talking to uh, talking to him later, and he was like, I just can't support that. He said, it's not right. And he caught flack, yeah. you know, because he voted right. He voted yeah. with his heart, yeah. you know, and tried to represent his, his people as, as best he can and, and caught flack for, you know, voting that was obviously a a a moral issue in the right way. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, and, the, and that's they get attacked if they vote with sense. Yeah. Seems like there's lots of conflicts like that. Yes. Uh, within Nationwide. The party. Yeah. And. We've gotten to a situation where you've got to walk the plank and be totally pure, and you can't depart, you know, from any of the or uh, you're the out, soca, or you're out, right? Yeah. You're ostracized, you're ridiculed. Yeah. Uh, it it really is ridiculous. I I um I caught uh, a story yesterday about a lady in Canada. Of course, everybody knows what's going on in Canada. The truckers are protesting government-imposed vaccine mandates, although 90% of them, it is reported, are vaccinated. Yes. Uh, So it's not that they're... But it was their choice. But it was their choice. That's right. Uh, But uh, caught a report that uh, a lady and her husband who own a gelato shop up there in Canada uh, happened to make a contribution in, in one uh, to the effort, and in one case, actually provided fuel to one of the truckers when the temperature run out. The temperature was going to be below thirty. Good, uh, uh, thirty below. Excuse me, that night, which is not unusual this time of year no. in Canada, and was worried and provided fuel to the trucker. Anyhow, that got found out. That got learned. That got leaked. She got doxxed, and she started crying in an interview last night on Jesse Waters about this whole situation. Because of the division in her country, right? It, it hurt her heart to see her countrymen at odds like that, and so she she committed an act of humanity, helping somebody. And act she of got, kindness. She got ostracized. Yep. We should be praising this lady. Th- that just sort of feels like we're kind of to getting that way here in this country, where it's, we're it's at each the other. The line is being drawn. It's it's not good. Yes, um, and our. We have a president who we were told we've got to elect because he's going to unite us all, but it sure feels like we've, we're more divided Out than of ever. the gate, he divided the country. I, I mean, right off the bat. I mean, you know, cut the the pipeline, and that. I mean, our gas prices started going up and have not slowed down. And that, that uh, I think that prompts another question there. You being in the, in the farming uh, industry, how's that affecting the farmers i mean it's got to be a a, a major blow. well you just look at at all the tractors that are running the diesel that is burned and 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 granted you know they're able to buy a farm diesel that's uh, a lower price than the road diesel right. but i mean all of that came up you know the road diesel is here and the farm diesel is right below it yeah uh everything costs i mean the the manufacturers can't get enough tractors on the lot just like you know the car manufacturers because you know all these things are running on computer now you know we've running right. i think we've got three tractors and you know heaven forbid if you have a breakdown try to get a part uh, i mean it's it's rough yeah well something's got to give somewhere it feels like uh and we have a president that's now back on the campaign trail to push his uh, Build Back Better plan is a solution to inflation. So we're going to drop more money into the economy. We're going to inject more trillions of dollars into the economy printed out of thin air as a solution to uh, curb inflation, which just totally goes counter to every economic totally principle. Totally against the, the <laughs> proper idea. Golly. Uh, well, and, and along those lines, uh, of course, the Republicans have the majorities in, in both chambers. Uh, at the Capitol here in Mississippi, it, it seems like there's been, uh, I guess, more alignment on some it of the has. major issues. I, it this has year. it has been a different session. You know, this is my what second term, seventh year. Um, it hasn't been the big squabbles. Yeah, 
I mean, folks are, are, are working together more. I mean, you know, we're going to have the votes that are going to come down and it's going to go straight down party lines, but there hasn't been a fight. Yeah. I mean, you know, a big argument or a big blow up over a particular issue. I mean, you know, I like everybody down there and, and as long as we can work together, the state benefits. Yeah, and Representative Robert Johnson does a good job. Does a great job. Uh, does we, a we great support. job. He's been a guest on the program. He's just a, a good, honorable, clear-thinking yes, person. Yes, sir. You want him to be your opponent, honestly, on this, from a party perspective. Yes, I mean, and he's going to lay it out there and explain it and, yeah. you know, and, and go about his business. Yeah. But, you know, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It's good to see. Appreciate that. And Representative Mangold, appreciate you so much coming in today, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm I've sure enjoyed we'll, it. Thank you for having me. I'm sure we'll be talking some more as yes, you guys sir. wrap it up. We're going to wrap it up shortly. we got another segment in this hour.